September 1st. The beginning of the church year or the beginning of the indiction. The First Ecumenical Council, Nicaea 325, decreed that the church year should begin on September 1st. The month of September was, for the Hebrews, the beginning of the civil year, Exodus 23:16, the month of gathering the harvest and of the offerings of thanks to God. It was on this feast that the Lord Jesus entered the synagogue in Nazareth, Luke 4, 16-21. Open the book of the prophet Isaiah and read the words, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, Isaiah 61, 1-2 The month of September is also important in the history of Christianity because Emperor Constantine the Great was victorious over Maxentius, the enemy of the Christian faith, in September. Following this victory, Constantine granted freedom of confession to the Christian faith throughout the Roman Empire. For a long time, the civil year in the Christian world followed the church year, with its beginning on September 1st. The civil year was later changed and its beginning transferred to January 1st. This occurred first in Western Europe and later in Russia under Peter the Great. The Venerable Simeon, the Stylite. He was born in Syria of peasant parents. At the age of 18, he left home and was tonsured the monk. He undertook the most difficult ascetic practices and sometimes undertook a strict fast for 40 days. He eventually took upon himself a form of asceticism that was previously unknown. He stood day and night on a pillar in unceasing prayer. At first his pillar was 6 cubits high. He later raised it to 12 cubits, then to 22 cubits, then to 36 cubits and finally to 40 cubits high. On two occasions his mother Martha came to see him, but he refused to receive her, saying from atop the pillar, Do not disturb me now, my mother. If we become worthy, then we'll see each other in the next world. Saint Simeon endured countless assaults from the demons, but he conquered them all by prayer to God. The saint worked many great miracles, healing by word and prayer many who were afflicted. People from all over gather around his pillar, the rich and the poor, kings and the slaves. Simeon helped everyone, healing some of infirmities, comforting those in need, instructing others and reproaching some who held heretical beliefs. Thus he turned in Empress Eudokia from the Otihian heresy and brought her back to orthodoxy. He lived the ascetic life during the reigns of the Emperor Theodosius the Younger, Martian and Leo the Great, Simeon the first great stylite in Christianity and a great miracle worker, lived to be 103 years old. He reposed in the Lord on September 1st, 459. His relics were translated to Antioch, to the church dedicated to his name. Saint Joshua, the son of Nun Joshua was the leader of the Hebrew people after the death of Moses. Of several hundred thousand Jews who came out of Egypt, only he and Caleb entered the Promised Land. Joshua lived to be 110 years old and died approximately 1440 years before the Nativity of Christ. Read of his faithfulness to God, his works and his miracles in a book of Joshua. Reflection we should use all that is necessary in this world for the cultivation of our souls, for when death separates us from this world, we will take nothing to the other world except our souls, in whatever state they have been formed here. When he was 18, Saint Simeon the Stylite was so concerned about the salvation of his soul that one day he fell face down on the earth and prayed to God that he would show him the path of salvation. 
and lying thus in prayer for a long time, he had a vision that he was digging a trench for a foundation, and exhausted from digging, stopped to catch his breath. A voice spoke to him, saying, Dig deeper. Then he began with a greater labor and effort to dig yet deeper. Again he stopped to catch his breath, but again he heard the voice, Dig deeper. He again began to dig, with even greater labor and effort. At this the voice spoke to him again, Stop it, it is sufficient. Now build what do you wish to build, for without labor you will succeed in nothing. Those who labor little and build the life of their soul on shallowness, build on sand, which cannot uphold anything, even in his transitory world, and even more so in the eternity. Contemplation Contemplate the lawlessness of David. 2 Samuel 11 How David committed adultery with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, while Uriah was away at war. How David arranged to the death of Uriah. How God became anger with David. Homily On the Word, the Son of God In the beginning was the Word, John 1, 1. The Logos, the rational, intelligent word, existed in the beginning. This pertains to the divine nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, by saying in the beginning, do we think that the word of God has a beginning? Or that there was a certain date in time when the Son of God was born of God the Father? In no way, for the birth of the Son of God can have neither a date nor a beginning since time is a condition of this transient world, and it does not affect the eternal God, and therefore it does not affect anything at all that is of God. Can the sun remain the sun if the sunlight it separates from it? Will a man remain a man if his mind is taken away? Would honey still be honey if its sweetness is separated from it? It cannot. Even less can one conceive of God as separate from his logos, from his rational word, from his intelligence, from his wisdom, the eternal Father separate from his co-eternal Son. No, brethren, the words are not about the beginning of the Son of God from God the Father, but rather about the beginning of the history of the created world and the salvation of mankind. This beginning is the word of God, in the Son of God, he began both the creation of the world and the salvation of the world. Whoever would speak of the creation of the visible or invisible worlds, or of the salvation of mankind, must begin with the beginning. And that beginning is the Word of God, the wisdom of God, the Son of God. For example, if someone were telling a story about boating on a lake, he might begin it like this. In the beginning there was a lake, and on it sailed a white boat. No reasonable person would interpret the words. In the beginning there was a lake, to mean that the lake came into existence on the same day that the boat sailed on it. Thus, no rational man could take the words of the evangelist. In the beginning was the word, as though the word of God came forth from God at the same moment, that the world was created. Just as the lake existed four thousand years before the boat sailed on it, so the word of God existed for a whole eternity before the beginning of creation. O Son of God, co-eternal with the Father and the Spirit, enlighten us and save us. To thee be glory and praise forever. Amen.